I just got an email from a client and uh, it looks pretty bad. Have a look at this. Oh no, it's the weekend. What am I going to do? So what do you do in that situation? I mean, say it's a Saturday afternoon, no violin shops are open and you find this. What could you do? So in this video, I'm going to talk you through step by step what you can do when the strings have all loosened and, you know, and everything is just sitting so precariously. Now, the first thing I have to say is don't keep your instrument outside. Don't keep it on a stand. It's actually not that good because when you keep your instrument out like that it's actually susceptible to humidity especially in Australia where we keep our houses quite open so recently we've had down to like less than 20 percent humidity which is really dry and what happens the pegs shrink and when the pegs shrink they literally just poof, just loosen and uh, and that can just happen it's, it's quite normally and and then when fourth pegs shrink You've got a real problem. You've got a very loose bridge. I mean, have a look at this picture. So the bridge has actually slipped up slightly and uh, that's really scary. And, and I mean, the soundpost could fall over. I don't think it has in this situation. So now if your soundpost has fallen over, you're going to have to go to a violin maker. But if it hasn't fallen over yet, I'm going to show you how to very carefully just get a little bit of tension on the strings and then fix everything up. So here we go. I'm going to do this in my workshop because uh, I feel a lot more comfortable there. So come over here with me. Okay, so first, of course, I'm going to have to reenact finding the instrument. I'm going to play my cello today. Just a total shock when your beloved instrument looks like it's totally unplayable and it's about to fall apart. So, uh, so I've, what I've done with this cello is I've literally put everything in the same position. Now, remember, don't practice this at home. Don't try it at home. This is actually a solution to a problem uh, when you have the problem. Okay, <laughs> don't practice. Uh, you know, hopefully you'll never have to do this. One thing you can do is when you change strings, you can actually practice getting the feel for how the bridge moves and those kinds of things. So here we go. I'm going to show you on a cello and on a violin. So here it is, and that's pretty much what it looks like in the pictures. It's it's a real worry. So the first thing that you do is you've you've got to get just a tiny bit of tension on the strings, uh, on, on one or two strings, and get the bridge into the right position. Okay, so that's the first step. So you can see the bridge is totally out of position. Luckily, the sound post hasn't fallen down. So you just wind up the strings the tiniest bit just to get a little bit of tension so that um, if you have absolutely no tension, the bridge will just fall down again. Now you can see that the feet of the bridge are totally out of place. So you can see where the, uh, the marks where the bridge should be. And that's actually really helpful. It makes it really easy for you to reposition the bridge. But sometimes you won't have those marks. So I'll show you where a bridge needs to be. But I'm going to reposition it now because I'm worried that the soundpost is going to fall over. Also, always, if you tilt the instrument, always turn it so that the, the upper strings are downwards. So the sound post is here, right? And because it gets the, the um, top, the instrument narrows out, if you have the instrument leaning this way, the chances of the sound post falling down are much lower. Okay, so you keep it turned this way. And uh, so first thing we're gonna do is very gently, I'm just gonna lay it on my legs here very gently and I'm going to re like position the bridge. So first thing I'm going to do, you can see it's very crooked, so I'm going to gently pull the feet to the right location and because the strings are very loose, this is actually very easy to do. Okay, now the bridge is in the correct position but the um, the bridge may not be straight, it could still be leaning one way, so make sure that the bridge is actually straight. So I'm checking from the side 
and this and this is actually quite good like it's actually fairly straight you just don't want the bridge to fall over while you're tensioning the strings now while I'm there I'm actually just gonna take the tension off the uh, fine tuners like um, I mean unwind the fine tuners because it's something you have to do anyway now on the cello I'm gonna tune up the D string and the G first they're the middle two strings uh, for now so let's Let's go. So I'm just getting a bit of tension on the D string. Now this is going to be enough tension to just hold the bridge into place. Now when the strings loosen, they literally just kind of curled everywhere. And we want to, uh, I've explained this before, but we want to get these strings neatly rolled up against the peg box on this side. So I'm just going to do that for you. So I'm just going to loosen it off just a little bit there. Then I'm going to tighten it right over against the peg box. Okay, so I've got two strings tightened now, which is fantastic. Uh, because now the bridge, you know, it's very low chance that the bridge will fall down. I'm now going to tighten the higher string, the A string on the cello or the E string on a violin. Cello on the old one, I mean. Okay, so that's going to be the next step. Again, I'm putting the string right up against the peg box and that pulls the peg in. Now, very important step right here. You stop everything and you check that the bridge hasn't pulled forward. Because as you're tuning up, the bridge can pull forward and if it pulls over too far, it can fall over and slap onto the instrument. So you have to be very careful. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna straighten this now. There you go, I've straightened it. And now what I'm gonna do with the C peg, I'm actually gonna do something different. Uh, and really you should, you, it's pro possibly a good opportunity to do that. I'm just quickly gonna pop some peg paste on the peg. So here we go. So I'll take it right off. I'll get my peg paste, which is here. And I'm gonna put a bit of peg paste on just the shiny surfaces. It doesn't need to be anywhere else. There you go. And then you put the peg in very gently and turn it a lot. So you just turn it a lot while pressing it in very gently. So peg paste just helps the peg move a lot smoother. Um, it's great stuff. I use the hill peg paste, um, hill peg paste, uh, and that stuff's been around for, for I think over a hundred years actually. I remember my dad using it in the when I was a tiny kid. I actually helped him when I was uh, I think six years old. I was actually helping him with peg paste. Still use the same stuff, exactly the same. So that was close to fifty years ago. I'm not that old really. Okay, so now I just put the C string on as well, and again, I make sure that um, that the string is wound right up against the peg box. So we, here we go. So put the string through the hole there. Then you wind it over itself to stop it from slipping there, and then right up against the peg box. And this will now push the peg in and stop it from slipping in the future. Also, make sure that their strings are actually <laughs> attached <laughs> at the uh, at this um, at the tailpiece end. <laughs> I was just happily tightening the string just then, and uh, here's the other end, and it it's too short now, so I'm going to have to go again. Here we go. I'll just quickly sort that out. Okay, so once that's done, you can literally just tune the instrument, checking carefully that the, uh, the bridge is still straight. The, also, the other thing you can do, like when you put on a new string, you can just put some graphite in the grooves like this. And then you do the same thing up here at the nut. That just makes the string slip really easily. Okay, so now it's just a matter of tuning the cello. And I've always tuned 
the cello using a tuning fork. Okay, so now it's just got to be tuned properly and you can play again. <laughs> Everything's working again. Oh, okay. Thank you, Olaf. Thank you so much. And here's what you do if you find a violin in the same situation. So first of all, reposition the bridge. If if everything's marked incorrectly on the instrument, uh, the bridge should, should be sitting in the middle of those nicks, those little nicks um, on the F hole. And it should sit literally, if you drew a straight line between from one to the other, the bridge should be sitting exactly in the middle. I've got the bridge sitting in the right position, then I straighten it, and now I tighten one string, and just tighten whichever string is already tight, maybe, uh, you know, or just so, you know, you can keep working with what's there. And you don't want all the strings on one side tight and all the strings on the other side loose. So you, you try and balance it out a bit so the downward tension is always the same. So there you go. Then the same thing, I uh, wind up the strings to be close to the peg box. Keep straightening the bridge to make sure it doesn't fall down. This instrument really hasn't been strung up for a long time, so <laughs> it's actually quite dusty. See how the bridge is crooked again now? So make sure that you straighten it again. There it goes. So it's pushed together. I use my thumbs in between here to, to push it together. I usually recommend that you lay it on your lap while you do that. These pegs are a bit bad, so I've probably got to put peg paste on these ones as well. Okay, that's all working again as well. So next time when you find your instrument in a total mess, you know, just follow those simple steps and you'll be able to get playing again straight away. Now, what I would do is just take your instrument to the violin maker as soon as you possibly can after something like that has happened, just to check that the sound post is still in the right place. And also listen, make sure that the sound is okay. But this way, at least you'll know what to do if you're ever in a situation like that again. Anyway, if you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to my videos because you can learn lots more from my videos. So hit the subscribe button, but also the little bell because when you hit the little bell, you actually find that every time I post a new video. Okay, thanks for watching and keep making beautiful music. Bye. Hey, thank you, Olaf. <laughs>